So what is going on guys? It's Triple G here back with another Tiny Tina's Wonderlands video. In today's video is my full review of the game. Completely balanced, no need for these honest reviews here because that's all you get. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week and otherwise, let's get straight into this video. So the video is going to be broken down into a few sections so we can address some issues with the game as well as address some of the absolutely fantastic parts of the game as well so we're going to break it into story combat bosses loot and the chaos chamber slash end game so let's get into the story first now many of you if you are long-term viewers of my channel both on twitch or youtube will know that i am a cut scene skipper i have no interest in the story whatsoever however this time this story will grab you and get you from the get-go the voice acting alone is worth the entry fee for this video game the voice acting is brilliant the story is funny and it makes you feel emotional and wholesome all the way through so i highly highly recommend that you take the time to listen to the dialogue listen to what they're saying pay attention to the cutscenes because the more you do that the more you'll be invested in these characters and you will just fall in love with the story it is by far the best story in the Borderlands series as a whole even though technically Wonderlands isn't in the Borderlands series you can tell that there has been a dedicated team of writers that have really invested the time into this and then gone the extra mile with the voice acting I'm not sure if the Dragon Lord himself topples Jack as a villain even though he is a very very good villain but He's not quite Jack for me, but very, very good. The story itself is pretty lengthy. It's not as long as Borderlands 3, thank God, but there is a significant chunk and it is rich with really, really superb narrative. Then onto the combat. And whilst there aren't any new mechanics added from Borderlands 3 to Wonderlands, it just feels a lot smoother. There are some slight distances. The fact that you could jump and slam from any height now, you don't have to be on anything is really nice melee is a lot better it is like a secondary skill the melee damage has been cranked up you have different melee speeds depending on the weapons that you have and some of the melee weapons now actually have really incredible abilities that you can lean into melee is definitely a part of your arsenal now and not just something you do because you're panicking the last thing that we're going to touch on is the addition of spells which replace grenades I don't know how I'm ever going to go back to grenades after playing this. Spells have brought such a wide array of different things to the video game with the way that they interact with the environment, the different types of things that they can do. Spells are absolutely fantastic and it's going to be interesting to see what they eventually do in Borderlands 4, how they adapt to the fact that spells have now been invented in the Borderlands series. Next, we're going to move on to the bosses. And the bosses in Wonderlands are fantastic. Fantastic. They have mechanics to them. They are interesting. They challenge you in ways that you've never been challenged in other Borderlands games before. The bosses were fantastically fought through. And they are really good. No more bullet sponges. They are absolutely brilliant. The only downside to the bosses is that at the moment there are over 70 bosses or named bosses in the game that do not respawn. This needs to be remedied. I want to see them back. They were fantastic. I want to replay and refarm these guys. They were absolutely brilliant. Then we move on to the loot. Now, obviously, the loot is different in Wonderlands because we have armor and ring slots and amulets and all of that. that which obviously goes without saying there are legendary versions of all of those slots but the one thing i want to point out is that purples are really really good and even blues are really really good when it comes to wonderlands so don't sleep on those the quest items that you can get as well are very very powerful the one thing that we do need to touch on is loot look which is a different way of loot working in wonderlands i do have a dedicated video to this but I will just touch on the fact that you need to be going around collecting all the collectibles in the game in order to boost your look. And that includes boosting dedicated drops. So if you were a traditional farmer in Wonderlands and the previous Borderlands games, you're going to want to get those collectibles in order to give you the best chance at your dedicated drop. So linking on from loot is the endgame and chaos chambers. 
So the Chaos Chambers are a tremendous addition to Wonderlands and it's something that I now want to see in every Borderlands game in the future. They are incredibly fun, incredibly addicting to play. Now, the way that they work is it's a series of rooms that you need to clear with bonus objectives that will give you crystals that you can spend at the end after defeating a series of rooms and bosses. Now, each time that you go through a room, you will choose either a blessing or a curse. The curses come with modifiers. I'm not a fan of the modifiers. Some people will be. That is why I didn't give it five out of five because of the modifiers and the fact that we don't have respawnable bosses in the game right now. However, the Chaos Chamber is still a ton of fun. Gives players a variation that if you do not want to just dedicate farm a single boss, you can go into the Chaos Chamber and target maybe a legendary pistol or an armor slot and you still have that wide variation of gameplay and it doesn't pigeonhole you into just doing one task at a time to get one item at a time. The Chaos Chamber also allows you to push that Chaos level up. It is the only way that you can push Chaos levels up by doing the challenge mode of that chaos run and then if you are successful you will go up the next chaos level as well and unlock that so it is the only way that you can do that and of course what we mentioned earlier about the loot luck the higher you are in chaos the more loot luck you have overall i absolutely love wonderlands no shill no nothing i genuinely love it and i can't stop playing it there are some things that need to be addressed the dedicated drops are going to be a change for some people. But once you look past that and see that once you have the collectibles, that you will be getting around about a 10% dedicated drop chance rate, that feels about right for me and my personal preference. Throw in some changes to those modifiers and I would be calling this the perfect game. It sets the benchmark for story, combat, bosses and the chaos chamber in endgame. It sets the benchmark for all of those activities. With some subtle changes here, this could be the best game in the Borderlands universe. Guys, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week and otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip.